Hey everyone, in the shop today with the BX2380 that I picked up a few weeks ago, and I have to say, I am pleasantly surprised at the things I'm learning about this tractor. Um, but first, before I get into the hydraulics, and I'm going to explain why I've changed my tune on this, um, I want to tell you about what the first product from Hydros Plus for Kubota tractors, and it's going to start with this BX, and it is this cylinder here. Now, I will have a video later showing um, a prototype that I've put together and the difference in lift capacity. We can run the numbers, it's going to be about 35% more uh, because it's going from one and a half, which is what this is. You can tell I've beat it up a little bit, taking it apart. I, it, it measured on the outside as 1.8, I think, so which would indicate it's about a one and a half. Now that whether that's, you know, 32 millimeter, well, I don't know what the millimeters are, but but um, you know whether it's that or one and a half, it's pretty much one and a half. So um, we'll go from one and a half to one and three quarters. That's going to slow it down. But it's going to give it a lot more power. Um, same as what we do with the John Deere One series. Now, I. Originally, and I may have told a handful of people this that have asked, uh, you know, are you going to come out with cylinders for the BX? And my answer has been, I don't think it has enough flow. I want to look at it. I did not have a tractor to look at. Uh, and I'd made some assumptions about this tractor that turned out to be wrong. So I'm glad that they're wrong. And because they're wrong, uh, the first product is going to be lift cylinders. Will there be other products? Possibly. Will there be a pump? Ugh, I don't know. Uh, let's talk about that. So, uh, well, before we do, I see so many people talk about Teflon tape. <laughs> these are these are pipe threaded uh, cylinders, which are just pipe thread. Anytime I see it, and I had some of it originally, I just don't want to use it if I don't have to. I wouldn't think Kubota would have to do this, but they do. And so uh, we've got pipe right here, and they've used, tef used Teflon tape. You hear people talk about that all the time. Don't use it. I it's probably not a problem, not, just not something I would use. I will probably make these O-ring seals, and I will send uh, new fittings, but they will be the same JIC 3.8s here. So that's what the new product's going to be. If you're interested in videos about Kubota BX, uh, consider subscribing. I'll have some more videos showing you what a 1.75 cylinder can do and um, hopefully in a few months if we can get on the production schedule uh, we will have a new product. I, I also want to hear like how many people are interested in this. I know there are a few uh, but if there's a lot more than I expect I, I want to be able to, to uh, satisfy that demand. So if it's something you're interested in let me know below or kevin at hydrosplus.com. So Pleasant surprise number one is that this tractor actually has about five gallons per minute at wide open throttle. So I've got I've already run that and 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 you know we'll show you this. The reason I have this still on here is one, I'd have to switch everything back. I've got quick connectors on there. But two, I'm gonna do uh here shortly, I'll show you what the different flows at the different uh RPMs are because this does use a priority flow divider. So you can see that the priority flow divider is here. Underneath there is the pressure relief valve where you can shim it and get more uh, pressure. But all of that is integrated into the pump that supplies the implement and steering flow. Because of that, it's going to be really tough to create more flow out of this. Now, can we rob some from the steering? Maybe. Um, it would involve making new parts for this priority flow divider. If we can do that, I don't know how much we can take because um, according to tractordata.com, it's about 6. Uh, I want to say it was 6.8. Now that was probably at 3,200 RPMs. So maybe we can take another half a gallon. Maybe we can take a whole gallon from that. If we do, uh, we're still only at six. Is that enough to make a material difference? Maybe. Uh, maybe it'll run a limb saw, but tell me below, are people getting this tractor and really wanting to run a limb saw or 
maybe the saber, uh, that cutter that's a sickle cutter on the front of this. If, if you want to do that, actually this one will probably run it already, so maybe don't care about that as much. Um, but like a limb saw, probably won't run a limb saw. So that said, this thing steers easily. It is like you can almost steer it with your mind. It is sim very simple to steer. Uh, it means it has plenty of, of power down here. They use a different, uh, a symmetrical cylinder here, uh, which I would say is better for steering because it's a, a consistent uh, experience whichever direction you do. John Deere uses one like this, which has less surface area on here than here. So you get more power on one side. I don't know if anybody really notices, but I like that approach better, except it's in the front. So mm, I don't know about that. So all that said, um, let's get to actually looking at the hydraulic flow. I'll show you what, uh, what we get at different RPMs. And in another video, I'll have a few videos on this tractor. I'm actually gonna go through and talk about why so many people believe that this valve is different and better than what John Deere uses. And they're right. Well, maybe not better, it's different. I'll tell you why it's different. I'll tell you why, especially with under no load, it does better for two functions at once. I will say it's the only one that I have been able to find that uses this configuration on a loader valve. John Deere, pretty much all construction equipment, everything else I've been able to find uses the same one that John Deere uses. I have not found a significant weakness in this approach yet, except for maybe, maybe this is a lot more expensive to make, but I doubt it. Uh, there is a pressure thing, but I'll go through that in another video. So that said, uh, let me get everything set up and I'll show you the RPMs at different, or, or the flow at different RPMs. All right, here we are. We've got the tractor already warmed up. We started up, we're at idle. Now, as you can see, 1400 is the idle. About 1800 on forward is what they recommend for loader and backhoe. So they're basically telling you right now, if you don't go up to 1800 RPMs, your back, your loader may not work that well. And as you can see, it barely works. That would not be usable. Now, generally that doesn't bother me, except I like to drive around at idle. This tractor's plenty fast at idle, as far as ground speed. But if you have to move your bucket, <laughs> it's gonna take a minute. So we look here, it's just over one gallon per minute, say one to one and a quarter, probably. Let's run up to, 2,000 RPMs, right inside of the loader backhoe range. And as you can see here, there's a function kind of like you would want. And this flow here now to the implements is a little over two gallons a minute. That's pretty good. And you're only at 2,000 RPM. Jump up to 25. where a lot of people probably get run this tractor. Yep. Three gallons a minute. Three, 3,000. That's pretty good for a small tractor, and that beats John Deere by a good gallon and a half. Uh, yeah, gallon and a half. And it's still stock. We haven't done anything to this tractor. Now, with the John Deere, um, with what we do, I say you get between five and 
probably somewhere between five and five and a half. Exact depends on exactly how you tune it. The John Deere pump, according to the specs that we have, uh, would put out more than this pump, at least according to tractor data. We're about to check and see what is it that we can get for this pump, uh, all of it going through one direction, and um, we'll see if it's much different or the same. So uh, let me get this tire off and we'll have a look at this together. I have not done this part, so I've, clearly I've already done this and, and plumbed it in. Uh, I haven't done anything on the uh, flow dividers other than looking at it. So uh, we're gonna learn this one together. All right, we have the tire off, and as I mentioned earlier, this is the uh, flow divider. The guts of it is in there. We also have, oh, can I get in here? That is the pressure relief valve. That's where you add shims. Now, we're gonna crack this baby open, but what you can tell from here is you've got an outlet here, an outlet here. This one was forward, and this one was backwards, or to the back. What happens is there's a spool that was going to move back and forth in here to adjust to adjust the flow ratio based on back pressure. It's basically a pressure compensated priority flow divider. So it's always going to give a certain amount of flow and it's going to move a little bit based on the back pressure it has to keep that flow. That said, uh, what I think I'm going to do, if I can do this, is I'm going to try to take this one off and plug it. I have a plug for this, I believe. It's a, it's a 3 8 plug. I'm gonna plug this uh, and I'm gonna take the guts of the flow divider out of this and just put the housing back on. That should make all the flow come through here and then we'll measure it. So that's the plan. Let me see if I can actually execute it. All right, I've got that side off and plugged. So what we're gonna do now, let's see if I've got my, this right here doesn't, doesn't come off very easily. Spring loaded. Oof. Oh, I've got to cut my knuckles. Hmm. Spring loaded here too. Let's see. I'm gonna keep it on video in case anything flies out of here that I don't don't see or don't catch. Here we go. All right. So this is the flow divider. And what you can see, I don't know if you can see that. Inside is that orifice. It's just a hole. And that's what meters the flow. In. And it goes in like this, right? So the front is the um, power steering in the back. You might not be able to see that. But the front is open right now, and the back is closed. And basically what happens is, as the flow comes in from the back side here, it goes into that orifice. And as it goes into the orifice, it starts to push on a spring that's inside of here. And if, when enough pressure is created, it'll actually start opening these, uh, these ports, essentially. And the way this orifice is set, it's only going to allow about, you know, one and a half, two gallons, whatever it's set to, to go through. Now, if pressure uh, builds up on this side, what, what will actually happen, because if pressure is building up on this side, it'll actually can send more through that hole, and, and it, the way this is designed, it'll start closing this off, so that with more pressure, you'll get more flow here, but as you close it off, it'll squeeze it back down to one and a half or two or whatever it's set to do. So by taking the guts of this out, we're gonna need Hopefully that's an SA-10 because that's all I have. And we'll see if we can plug that hole and then we get all the flow out of here. Let me see if I can find the right plug. All right, got my plug, moment of truth. I didn't actually try it. Oh, it's gonna be too small, look. Rick. Nope. Hmm. 
Must be like an SAE 12 or some metric thread. What can I do? You know, you can take this thing apart, but I'm not sure I want to take it apart because things will probably fly out everywhere. Hmm. Let me look around, see if I can find something else that size, 12. Might have something. All right, we are back. I came up with a very creative solution. Um, I had this hose going in on a T right here that I plugged the other side of. That got me to what I needed over here, except I couldn't shove all that in here, so I had to put this hose on and left a quick connect here, quick connect there into a T and a union and a whatever. So we got it. And here we go. Fourteen hundred RPMs. Three and a quarter, maybe. Three and a half, three no. Three to three and a quarter looks like. So uh, we're showing one to one and a quarter, so that's two gallons a minute. Seven, seven and a quarter. So that's consistent with the flow divider being a two gallon per minute flow divider to the front, which makes sense to me based on, you know, how, honestly, based on how Hydros Plus works. So you've got um, two gallons a minute going to the front. That's about what I set it at from the factory, one and a half to two. And uh, it's more than enough for, uh, for doing the steering in pretty much any situation. Now, um, as I mentioned earlier, we're going to do a number of videos on the Kubota. There's some new things, or not new things, some, I, I would say, questions that other people have around this loader valve and why it seems to function differently than, than the John Deere version. Uh, we're going to answer all those questions, so if, if you're a Kubota fan, definitely consider subscribing. Um, if you're a John Deere fan and you're not already subscribed, definitely consider that as well. It'll be interesting. I've already learned a few things that, that honestly were, are new to me and I've been doing this for a bit. Um, and, you know, one's not better than the other necessarily, but it, it does explain some things. Now, uh, for this solution, um, again, for this tractor, I don't know if we'll ever actually have more flow. I do uh, know, as I mentioned at the beginning, these cylinders we can make bigger we've got enough flow and we can still have a good uh, experience now whether this cylinder needs to get bigger i haven't even thought about that yet but it's nothing precludes us from making that one bigger um, but i think this one is the one that most people are going to be interested in so that's it for this video more to come thanks for watching questions comments please leave them below